everybody. I'm Ann Moore and I am with So Steady. I am your uh, So Steady ambassador and uh, we have a project coming out. Uh, actually, we've been working on it for a couple of months now and we're getting ready for class number three and it's going to be Galaxy and Blast Off. So I'm going to show you real quick. This is Galaxy and this is Blast Off. So we're going to be working on those two blocks. Let me get out of the way so y'all can see them a little bit better. And uh, on the board also just are a couple of blocks that we did last month and I showed you how to put the blocks together. So I kind of wanted those uh, hanging out up on the wall so that you could see that. If you have not signed up for all of the classes uh, together in a series, I would recommend that you do that. That way you get to come back and watch all of the classes until probably a month after the last one ends. And so uh, I just wanted to let you know that you can do that. Now I'm, I'm going to show you again. This is uh, Galaxy that we're going to be doing and this is Blast Off. So uh, we're, I'm going to switch over now to um, my, I'm going to flip the camera. So bear with me while I do that. Sometimes I'm not real tech savvy but um, I, I, I'm, I'm working hard at it, learning all of this good stuff. So bear with me just a moment while I bring it over and get readjusted here. So uh, let's see, let's, let's see, let's do, oh, I, see, I did it again. Okay, there we are. Oh, let me see if I can bring, there it is, camera, mic, go to camera. Go to back camera, hit done, X out of that. Oh, there we go. It's a beautiful sunny day here. So I've got my windows open so that you can, I can see out and get a lot of that really good, nice, uh, non-artificial light in here. Okay, the first things I want to talk to you about are uh, some of the things that we use for our blocks. As y'all know, um, So Steady has been very gracious and uh, they have a lot of these awesome blocks already cut, ready to go. They're 14 by 15 and they come in a multitude of different colors. They are on the website, so go in and look. And I still recommend that you buy your fabric for your front and your back from So Steady. They've got all of those wonderful colors and they're pretty inexpensive. And then maybe still go to the store who sponsored you and or sponsored this event and go pick out your background fabric from them. I think that would be a lot of fun. And um, I've been watching the uh, Westerly by Me site and you guys are doing awesome with your fabric choices. And I've, I've also recommended to you that maybe you, um, if you see something that you'd like to do maybe a little differently than what I've done, please do. Uh, this isn't all just all about me teaching you how to do a procedure and you making the exact same one that I made. But it's also about you um, using your design ideas in your product also. And so uh, I, want, I can't wait to see everybody's finished quilts when we're all done. So I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the products that we use. As y'all know, uh, about a, oh, maybe a month ago, we started selling Temple Fuse. I love this stuff. I ordered five rolls of it for myself because I do use a lot of it. It's uh, 15 inches by 10 yards long. It's $29.90. It's a very, very good price. And it's a really good, durable product. Now I'm going to show you, and I showed this to you a month ago, and they also have it on the website as an example for you too. This is the brand that I was using. I'm going to bring this in closer. What I did was I uh, just put a D and a W on here and uh, treated it just like I would if I were actually stitching it out. And then I cut it out like I would. Took it in the house. I washed it. 
on just a delicate cycle like you would a quilt and then I threw it in the dryer for just 10 minutes just to get most of the water out and as you can see this is the brand X that I was using here is the edge of it it just pulled away all the way up to the stitching line and of course you've got a little row of um, a little threads which of course those could be trimmed if you wanted to but this is the temple e fuse it didn't pull away at all all the way around even on the inside it stayed perfectly uh, pressed down and sealed down so um, this is really a fantastic product I do recommend that you order it I've not seen it anywhere else except for what we have and it's called temple e fuse and uh, so steady has their name on it and I wanted to show you when you get the product they make these in really really long rolls and then of course they come along and they cut them to 15 inches well if you start opening your roll and it feels like it's kind of caught up here at the top just run your hand just like that that's all you have to do all that is is where the the um, the uh, roll has actually been cut and so there's nothing wrong with it. I just wanted you to see that though. Now this is about how much I would need rolled out. Now at the bottom it's not doing that, but sometimes on, on one of the edges it's doing that. It's not damaged. It's, it's still very, very workable. Uh, it's not a defect in the product. It's just a part of the cutting process. So wanted to point that out to you. Now the rulers that we'll be using for the um, Galaxy and Blastoff or in the Flower Power block of rulers. Uh, they designed a, or let me put together a special template set. I hope all of you have purchased this by now. Um, it's got everything in it that you need with the exception of one ruler. And uh, we used it last month. And so I'm going to show you another block that I did with that ruler so you can see how much fun you would have with it. So I set these to the side. It has six templates in it and it has a little bit of instruction as to how to use each one of the rulers. And I uh, wanted you to know too that whenever you buy the rulers from us, you're going to get this paperwork inside that shows you how to use the rulers. You're not out there just trying to figure it out on your own. So let's put that aside. This is the other ruler that you will be needing. Now, we won't use it this time. Just remember that, okay? But it's such a fun ruler, I wanted to show it to you again. It's called the Outer Rim Marker. I don't use it like you are normally supposed to use it. It's actually for marking. But what I do is tape my template to it uh, with just scotch tape front and back. And then I use it, I, uh, last night I was using it, and I had it on hole position number three. So I have a little arrow right there. Those arrows are from g -Eazy. They're on our website. You get 192 of these uh, ruler stickers. These things are awesome. I use them all the time. I also, there's so many of them, I share with my friends whenever I go to a retreat. But anyway, so I've got a, a little mini reveal. I want to show you what I did last night playing with that particular ruler. Remember, I told you you could use other, um, you could use other rulers and make other designs. Well, I did. Now, the first thing I did was I drew it out. And this is just newspaper paper that I get at the newspaper office. But we also have uh, drawing sets that you can purchase. I'll pull, let me step around and grab mine real quick. Now, these are things that I kind of live by because I love to design uh, quilt blocks and quilts. And so these are things that I use. This is my stitching line disc. They are the exact same size as the bottom of my ruler foot. So when I drop one of these discs inside a template, it's going to draw, I'm going to, it's going to let me draw it out to the exact dimensions that it would be if I were actually stitching it out. So these come with it. Uh, you get the design set. 
you get uh, drawing pencils that you can use. And this is something that's really cool. You get this big ruler that has all of these markings already on it. Uh, there's probably, I'd have to count, I have not done that. There's probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 16 draw, uh, lines drawn on it, and you can switch it around and make even more if you need to. But you can actually lay this out on your block, and you can design a block out using the drawing pencils that came with it. Um, it comes with some paper, and you can use that. Uh, Y'all know fabric is, what, a minimum of $12 a yard? Well, I don't want to waste any of my fabric, so I will draw out a design before... I ever get to the uh, to my fabric so that I know if it's going to work or not and uh, I drew this one out last night because um, I don't really have since I'm using an outer room rim drawing tool I don't have something that precisely tells me exactly what you know how many hearts I can get around around this circle and what how big do I need to go with it so I drew it out and then there was my end result. I probably will finish this on out. I was thinking about coming on out a little bit further and making just a little bit of a heart or maybe even the tip of the heart kind of coming back in here and putting like a double heart right here. I thought that would be a lot of fun. And just another way that you could use that outer rim tool. I pulled another, and this is my heart's templates. I know some of you already have them. There are three, four, there are six heart sizes in here. So you could use any one of them and you could do, you could do an, inquire, an entire quilt just using hearts if you wanted to. I think that would be a lot of fun. Here's another template. This is uh, Spinifex number 11. Maybe some of you have it. You could also attach it to the outer rim tool and come on out even further with the um, design off of it. And I pulled out one more. This is the ovals. You could use it and make uh, just extend out with ovals. I have a quilt um, piece of fabric that I bought. It is, I wouldn't call it tie dyed, but it is hand dyed and it's kind of along the lines of a tie dye. There's a lady out of Dallas who uh, makes these and you can order them off of her site and they're absolutely beautiful. And I want, it has like, an, to me it looks like it has about eight sections to it. And so I want to use this ruler and I want to quilt that quilt. I think it would be just amazing done that way. So, I wanted to show y'all that. Here are the blocks that we'll actually be working on. Let me get this one out of my way. This is Galaxy, and this is one of the fabrics that I told you about that So Steady carries. And I made it out last night. This is the navy blue and on the back, let's show you that too. Your back should, uh, if your machine is adjusted properly, and hopefully it will be, and always check your tension so that you can make sure that it's adjusted properly. But this is the back side of my block. And I use the swirl uh, fabric that we have. So actually, when I'm through putting this all together, if somebody accidentally throws my quilt upside down and out, you know, and showing it, uh, it will be just fine. It will look to me as pretty on the back as it does on the front, other than it won't have the cut work on it that, um, that we're going, the look we're going for. And I noticed, like I said, a lot of you are kind of coming up and doing some a uh, little bit, maybe cutting in a different place or things like that on your blocks. And I love that. I want you to be creative. That's what part of this process is all about, is you thinking outside the box and deciding where you would like to have some designs come in. And uh, they've just been fantastic. You guys are having fun. This is Blast Off, and I did this on the pink fabric that So Steady has, and the swirl is on the back. I probably should have used a bolder 
color of thread when I made this and um, probably if I had been thinking about it I would have stopped my uh, free motion quilting maybe right here and that way exposed a little bit more of the the uh, reveal fabric underneath and probably would have shown it maybe out here and that's something y'all can think about doing too find places where you can reveal even more of your uh, reveal fabric I think that's a lot of fun and you know that's why we bought the fabric so that we could reveal it and kind of show it off in places so I think that's just way fun okay I'm going to put this back down so you can see a little bit easier um, I didn't use this on the blocks that we're doing today, but I did on the ones last month, and I will be using it again on another one. This is just a little simple three and a half inch ruler that you can probably get anywhere. Uh, I would check with the store that's sponsoring the event and see if they've got them. I'm using them in corners, and so I would love for you to have a little ruler like this. I think they're really uh, just very practical. Um, I'm using, let me see if I can reach these. This is my go-to ruler. Uh, this is the 12 and a half inch crosshair ruler, and it's the eight point. So that's what I've been using each time on this particular series uh, quilt that I'm doing. And of course, it, you, here's six inches, seven inches, all the way out. Uh, I decided to make all of my blocks 12 and a half inches. And, and that way I can use the edges of this ruler also as my cutting ruler. So that makes everything really simple and you don't have to have a lot of different tools. You don't have to try to measure your middle and, you know, come along with, uh, say, a ruler like this and try to get your edges squared away. Uh, you can do it without having to do that. These are handy rulers to have, though. I don't even know what brand this one is, but sometimes I used it whenever I needed to mark a, say a mark out here or something like that. But I also have the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So all I have to do is come in and make a dot wherever these points uh, meet. Uh, let's say I wanted to go 8 inches out. All I have to do is a little dot with, uh, say, a white chalk pencil or something like that. Now, um, let's move that out of the way. We have other rulers that I want you to know about. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes my hands are really tired and I've got maybe a lot to cut. And there is nothing more frustrating than uh, cutting something and your ruler slips and you're a quarter of an inch off or something like that. So we have these rulers there. This one's 18 inches. Um, all the way up to 24 inches, and but this is the most comfortable size to work with. This is adjustable, so let's say I wanted to cut nothing but three inch strips. All I have to do is come up here, tighten it on three inches, tighten it over here on three inches, slide it to the edge of my fabric right here, and I can cut a stack of three inch ruler uh, three inch strips really easily so I, something I use I wanted to point it out to you guys too so that you would know about them whoops sorry now I'm going to show you the drawing and this one's for galaxy this is what your uh, fabric is going to look like when you draw out your lines and we'll talk more about this whenever we get ready to do the actual class but I just wanted to kind of show you what my starting point is and uh, you know what I have what I do kind of beforehand you don't have to do it because I've already done it for you this would be blast off and this is all the all, only markings that I would put on that. Now I have these for all of my blocks. So I will be uh, showing those to you each time. And uh, if we have any questions, throw them out there. I have uh, one of uh, So Steady up at Sarah, I think it is, in the background. And uh, if you have a question, I would love to answer it for you. And so um, please put that out there. I'm going to show you some more tools we use. Are you back yeah. there? 
Yeah. Uh, we did have a question come in. They were asking how wide the border is on that quilt once it's finished. I don't know if that's something you want to answer here yeah. or. We turn around, it's right behind me. So let me measure it really quick because I think it's fairly wide. It's cut down to four inches. So I would have started with five or five and a half inches in all so that I would have something, you know, to hang on to and to mark my my lines and things like that. And that will be one of uh, when we're working on uh, two of the blocks a little bit later on. And, and I see we have a little extra time. I will go ahead and show you how to do those blocks, the uh, the uh, borders, because they're super simple. Probably. Uh, when we get to, what is this one? When we get to Milky Way, because that's the actual design that we're going to be using. So I will uh, also show it to you in the border. And then I do cornerstones because I'm kind of a lazy quilter. I don't want to measure and, you know, cut the corners and make sure everything measures off just right and things like that. So I do cornerstones. And my cornerstones are just a little flower design that's cut out and, uh, you know, works very well. So I'm going to show you some more things that I like to use whenever I'm uh, working on these blocks. Uh, things that I think are really uh, very, very helpful. Uh, number one would be a grid glider or a ruler work glider. Now, uh, the grid glider has a square cut out of it or a rectangle cut out of it so that you could actually have your feed dogs up whenever you're working with this one. This is, I use this one, but I don't so much use it when I'm quilting. Uh, I do, but not all the time. This one would be my preference for when I'm doing my quilting. The reason being, it only has a very small hole. It's about a half inch and it covers up the feed dog area. And if you know, on your machine, in that feed dog area, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And uh, a lot of times we use thumbtacks in our work whenever we're uh, using our rulers. And they're on the underneath side, uh, the flat part is. And uh, if I'm using my ruler work glider, I'm not as likely to get my thumbtack caught in uh, or or maybe uh, disturb my feed dog area and I, I maybe I won't have like a bump or something in my work. But when I'm using the grid glider, if I'm not using uh, thumbtacks, works just fine. I use my grid glider whenever I am piecing quilts all the time. I um, discovered that quite by accident one day. I was working on a, a patchwork quilt and uh, everything was just kind of not really sliding along like I thought it ought to. So I put my grid glider on and I don't piece without it now. It's very, very handy. So those are really super. They're $25 and they last forever. I've never worn one out. So just to let you know that. Chaco liners. This one is by Clover. We have them on the site. Now I have switched the powder in mine to iron off. That's just a personal preference. The other kind that comes in it is just as good. It brushes off. And usually what I do to get it off is an old, just an old toothbrush, like a soft or medium bristle toothbrush and just brush along the edges and it comes right off. The iron off, yes, you actually have to iron it. So unless you are ironing something that is not really nice and puffy and you don't want to destroy your puffiness, your um, loft, um, I wouldn't use this one if I didn't want to, if I was doing something that might destroy my loft. So don't get the iron off if you're going to do that, but get it if uh, yours is, mine's so well quilted, it doesn't have a whole lot of loft, so it's okay. But these are awesome, and they also fit down inside all of these little grooves right here. The only one it doesn't fit in is right here, but that's okay. I usually mark an X through here, uh, like a plus sign anyway, so it doesn't matter. But these are the only ones we have found that will actually fit down inside here. And they've got a little, uh, oh, 
one of those little metal things inside it like what we used to uh, use to make darts on clothing. Remember those 100 years ago? Well, it hadn't been that long, but it's been a while. And Anne, we did get a question. Um, mm -hmm. It's more of a general question. Someone's asking if you quilt on a long arm or a domestic machine, specifically for usually full-size quilts. Oh, that is a fantastic question. Thank you, whoever asked that. Thank you for asking. I have um, right now set up, a, it's a my Bernina 830. I also have a Janome 9450. They have the little bit wider head on them, and I love that about them. I have also quilted a queen size quilt on a little um, 730, just a regular machine. So it is doable. I have to be honest though and tell you, I actually do own a Q20 sit down machine. I do not own a long arm. I did for a little while and it felt like an alien in my hands. Uh, that was just me. I had already learned, you know, free motion using a sit down machine. So the um, holding the machine like this was harder for me than doing the fabric like this. So I uh, got rid of the long arm and bought a sit down and it's been fantastic. But um, a lot of my work gets done at retreats. And so I uh, usually have the the Janome with me and not the big sit down. So yeah, you can do that on a, uh, on any size machine really. So just so you know, cause my very first one was a queen size and I quilted it all myself. So yeah, you can definitely do it. Something else I keep on hand. This is uh, the fabric like I'm using for the quilt work I'm doing. It has two layers in the front because that's what I'm, you know, that would be my, this one would be my reveal fabric. It has the cotton, the same cotton that I'm using in my quilt. And then here's my backing. I use this to play and practice on while I'm setting my tension. And I think that's really, really important. Um, one of my earlier quilts that I did, I quilted a, a whole area that was about a foot wide by about two feet long. And then I happened to flip the quilt up and look at the back and all I saw were eyelashes. I had to rip that whole area out. So I've become very, very mindful of watching my um, my tension and anytime I change my bobbin I check my tension just to make sure that it's uh, still working really well and I found on most machines uh, if you have to mess with the tension at all you usually have to bring the tension down now that's not a hard fast rule you may happen to have a machine that uh, the tension has to go up on it's just rare and so um, just know that you can adjust the attention we usually do not have to adjust the bobbin tension at all but i did have a machine just recently that i finally did adjust the bobbin tension and it was like oh my gosh a light bulb went off uh, i got the exact stitches i'd been looking for and so yeah every now and then that has to happen and if it does do it very very carefully and do it in very very tiny increments and uh, be sure maybe put a little mark as to where you started from on your bobbin so that you can go back to that if you need to um, or call me I'll help you with it <laughs> anyway um, a seam ripper is invaluable whenever we are actually re uh, let me grab one of these Whenever we are getting ready to cut away our fabric, like here in the bottom, I use a seam ripper and I will just kind of run, let's put it all back together, run it barely under the fabric, maybe just pull up a thread or two and, and cut them and then make sure that I do, I'm not uh, digging into my underneath fabric. And um, I just tell you when you first start doing this, it's not a matter of if, you accidentally cut into your backing fabric it's more of a 
when it happens. There are fixes for it. You can use, uh, say, a glue. Um, if you don't plan on ever washing it, say it's going to be a um, wall hanging, uh, I would probably just use Elmer's glue and just press it down and maybe hit it with a hot iron to glue it in place. If I were going to be washing it, I would put a permanent glue on it. Or you can also come in here and do some kind of cute little stitching wherever you have ripped it and maybe do it in uh, two or three of your, like say I, say I ripped it right there, I would probably uh, put a few stitches in that petal and maybe this one up here and down here and this one over here just to make it look like that was absolutely intentional. So just know that it is fixable when that does happen. Just to, And also just make a really tiny hole whenever you are uh, running your seam ripper into it because you don't need much. You need enough that you can get like a pair of scissors like this or this. They have extremely sharp points to them. And you just need to be able to get that point in there. And that's all. And then you can start cutting. These are Karen K. Buckley scissors. Uh, there are a lot of different scissors like this. This is a serrated edge on it, and that's why I like it so well. Let's see if I can find it. Yep, there it is. It grips the fabric really tightly. I know Kai makes some that do that, and I don't know, probably Havel and Famori. Uh, a lot of brands make them, but this just happens to be uh, my personal favorite, so check with the store. They probably carry them. They are very, very popular, and I usually run into them in a lot of the stores that I'm in, and they come in several sizes. These two are the sizes I have found that I use the most. This particular pair would be what I'd use on these smaller areas. Uh, when I get out to this, I could probably switch to my bigger ones. And um, so they're just just invaluable for me. So we'll move those out of the way. A side threading needle or a self-threading top, top threading needle are really important if you want to bury threads. Now on some things I bury threads, like here around my edge, I buried threads because those would have shown if I had done, say, the four tiny stitches and then taken off stitching. These, I come into the middle 16 times because there are eight petals, so I don't bury those. I, do, I use a pair of scissors like this, and I just cut it very, very, I can lay it right down on top of the thread and cut it. So these are, I know everybody always asks, what brand are these? These are from Mori, but Tooltron makes them. I've seen them in uh, Tula Pink's line. I've seen, uh, trying to think what other brands, a lot of different brands uh, make these. So it doesn't matter what brand they are. I think they all work the same. Uh, these are a cute color. That's probably why I picked them up originally. Here's the Scotch tape that I use. And I know, yeah, Scotch tape is Scotch tape. Yes, it is, but this has a gloss finish. It's transparent. It doesn't have that frosted look to it. And I always noticed whenever I would uh, tape my rulers together with the frosted tape that it was difficult to see lines in it. And so that's why I went to the clear uh, transparent. Here's my Elmer's school glue. This is washable, no-run school glue. And I know some of you are in foreign countries. You may not have access to Elmer's school glue. So any kind of uh, washable glue is fine. Now I'm heavy-handed, so that's why I bought uh, these tips to go on mine. Just like that. There's the, the, the pointed tip to it and then this is just goes down inside it and keeps glue from running out of it. Let's put that back on. I just bought these off of Amazon. Uh, I wish some one of the stores would carry them. I think they could uh, probably get rich because everybody wants to know where did you get these. So I think I've got the package. Yeah, I do in here. So I'm going to show that to you. Um, and you might ask your stores, 
hey, could you look at these and could you carry them for us? Because these are, have been great. And whenever I uh, mine gets clogged up, I just kind of run some hot water through it and kind of unclog it. Let's get those out of the way. And Anne, we had another question come in, oh, and um, and we can see about it. They're asking, well, how do you manage a regular like queen size quilt on a domestic machine? Oh, that's a great question too. So Steady has a weightless quilter, and look it up on the site. Uh, it actually, it's like. Uh, the best description I heard one time was somebody said, it's like inviting two or three of your friends over to hold the edges of your quilt while you're quilting. And uh, what it does is has clamps and it kind of sits around your machine and it holds up the edges of your quilt so that uh, whenever you're quilting, you don't have uh, an edge falling off because you'll be quilting along and all of a sudden you can't go anywhere. It's because one of the edges or a corner of your quilt has fallen off the edge of your table. So these clamps help hold it in place. I also, you can do the fluff and stuff method where you just bunch that quilt around you. But I really recommend that you have a... Uh, a system that has the clamps. I do, and it's it's really, it's handy. Um, I've, I've had mine for several years now, and I, I do rely on it quite a bit. And so um, that helps a whole lot when you're doing the big quilts. And I also recommend to you, the reason this quilt that we're working on is just a lap size, is because a lot of you, this is your first time to maybe do ruler work, and free motion work. So I didn't want something that was going to be overwhelming. Now we also do the squares and then we put them all together uh, using the, the um, quilt as you go method. And so you can have a king size quilt and all you've done are made say 12 and a half inch squares and you've put them together. And the way you put them together, you don't know that it is not a that it's a 12 and a half inch square that you started with. You think it's a, a king size quilt and you can put as many of them. I have um, the continuum quilt that I did a couple of years ago and it's um, probably a full size quilt. And uh, I did all of it and put it all together and it's a big, nice quilt. And uh, I did it with that uh, method, the quilt as you go method. So a lot of different ways you can do that. So good question, good question. Okay, this is a spacing gauge and this is a Sarah Diddy uh, little spacing gauge holder that we use. And I love this guy. I was always losing my spacing gauge until I got a hold of this. And I even would tell my students, hey, tie a ribbon right here so that uh, when you, because back then they were clear instead of the beautiful teal color that we have now. And if you dropped them on the floor, well, they matched every floor out there. So they were uh, a little bit hard to find and you didn't want to find it with the uh, roller on your chair. So I'd tell them to put a piece of ribbon on it. Well, the ribbon was always getting in my way. This does not really, I mean, this, you can put it on your finger and just keep, you know, do your measuring and things like that. And then when you're done with it, it goes right back on the necklace and this can go around your neck or it can uh, sit somewhere around your machine if that's easier for you. So must, this is a must have, I, I, you'll be using it a lot. Stable tape, to me, this is also a must have. I think this is probably a 10 piece set. All of our rulers now come with stable tape on them. And uh, I appreciate that they have started doing that or they used to do it in the beginning and then we had to get away from it and now we're back to it. So all of your rulers will come with stable tape with them, but every now and then sometimes a piece will just wear out or fall off or you know something. And so you'll be, you'll need to replace it. So I always keep a pack. Uh, you can get five, I think, for, what is it, $10? And 10 for maybe $20. You only need probably the pack of five. That should last you a long time, unless you're pretty hard on your rulers. But that's always a must-have. 
This is something else I use um, a lot of times when, especially if I go on a retreat and set up my table, I'll always have my so steady table. And you do need a good flat working surface whenever you're working on these blocks. And I know some machines have kind of a, a roundness to them, kind of like, you know, just a roundness, or their edges are a little bit curved. Our tables, the so steady tables, take care of that problem. We've got a good flat working surface. And I'll just go ahead and polish my table and make it super slick. You can also polish your um, ruler work gliders with this stuff. It's great stuff. And even uh, like your sewing table itself, you can put a little bit on there too. I've not hurt mine yet by doing that. And so it makes it kind of, just gives you a really good, nice slick surface. So that's something that I use. Remember the ruler stickers I told you about? Well, here they are. And uh, you can't see, uh, but you saw one earlier. Here's one I can show you. They're just a peel and stick like that. And you can peel it off and you can actually use it several times uh, before it finally just, you know, stops sticking. I haven't had one yet not stick, so I don't know how long you'd have to go. Whenever I put my, um, and, and I hope she's not listening, well, I hope she is listening, but I went to a friend's house um, Monday, and uh, several of us met, and we were uh, showing our work and stuff, and we have a new quilter in our group, and she uh, had pinned her, she had a little square, not much bigger than this one, and she had pinned it all together with safety pins, big safety pins. Uh, the pack had 50 safety pins in it, and all 50 of those safety pins were in that block. Like I said, it was not much bigger than this. And so I showed her, you really maybe only need about 10 of those, but I don't even use those anymore. I just use clips, and I, I got these recently. I don't even, I can't tell you what size they are. They're, um, they're the, the one step up, I think, from the smaller ones. And I do use the smaller ones. They're great, but I just wanted some that were a little bit bigger. So I don't pin my my uh, squares together at all anymore. I just use the clips. But if you do pin yours, that's fine. That's great. But you don't need very many pins, and you really only need them until you've got maybe a couple of these in here. And then you can unpin the whole thing. So just wanted you to know that so you can get out there pinning yours to death. Anyway, I won't mention her name. I don't want to embarrass her, but uh, but now she knows. She just, she had a few too many. That's okay. These are glitter grippers. They're also on our website. If you did not want to use stable tape, these are available. They're cute. Um, I like the stable tape better, but they're not bad at all. These are uh, ruler foot echo guides. Let's say you've got a big uh, number. This is a Spinifex number four, and this one's the mini. Let's say you've got the regular size, and you really um, you want to go ahead and start sewing before your flower power set gets here. You can use your echo guides, um, and you would probably use the little one, but you can echo with these little guys and always when you put these on your foot make sure that the number is reading correctly you don't want it upside down these have a little bit of a gray uh, gradation to them I guess is what you would call it uh, and they only go on a certain way and if you try to force it on you might break something so always make sure the number is pointing up and that you can read it um, if some of you are wondering, well, what kind of reveal fabric do I want? Well, this is just hap this happens to be one I just picked up recently. This is a um, cave, and it's the uh, peacock. And I saw it today on a, somebody's website. They had the peacock, and then they had another one. I think they called it lipstick or something like that. And it was in the reds and orange colorway and then this one is the purple and blue and green I think so that's an idea of something that would be cute for a reveal but 
seriously, go in your fabric store, the one who sponsored the event, and look around. I think you will find something that would be really pleasing to you. Um, one last thing I wanted to show you, and then I will open it up for questions. I don't know about y'all, but I was always losing my phone. It would be uh, under a pile of fabric. It'd start ringing, and I couldn't find it. And uh, they have these little guys. They call this a phone lounger. And so I've got a couple of them out here in my studio. I also have one in my uh, to-go box whenever I go on retreats. And so I always have that out, and I put my phone in it so that it's easily accessible. So just, uh, they're not expensive. I don't know. They may be, uh, don't quote me. I was going to say they may be $10, but I don't know. I don't remember. I've had mine for a while. And my mom, my mom's 86 years old. And she was over here back before Christmas. And she said, where'd you get that? And I told her and she said, well, I need one. I said, well, that's good because I already have you one ordered. And so she's got hers on her kitchen bar. And uh, my stepdad would always laugh at her because she could never find her phone. And now she can. And so um, anyway, just wanted to tell you those are the things that that work the most for me. I'm going to bring the blocks back out that we're working on. This is Galaxy. And this is uh, Blast Off. Uh, to me, this reminded me of a runway. That's why it was named Blast Off when I was working on it. When I was working on this quilt, it was back around December and January. And I, I, I go to a lot of retreats. I get a lot of work done when I go to a retreat. I don't know about y'all, but when I'm at home, you know, a load of clothes needs to be thrown in the dryer. Dinner needs to be started. Oh, I need to go do this. Oh, I need to go do that. And I'll find that at the end of the day, I didn't get very much done. But if I go on a retreat, I sew all day. And if I've got night owls with me, I sew half the night. And so uh, they were with me on a retreat. And I got them to help me name some of the blocks. And then also they helped me with the layout and what, how I wanted to put it all together. So um, ask your friends whenever you're working on a project and you're together in a group. Um, they're always full of great ideas, so check it out. So we'll open it back up to questions, and I am going to let the little barking dog in, so bear with me just a second while you get your questions ready. Sorry, that's little Miss Bossy Pants. Uh, she's either in wanting out or out wanting in all the time. Do we have any good questions? Oh, we do have one. Um, let's talk about those echo guides. So they're asking oh, yeah. if it can be used upside down on a non-westerly branded foot. They're asking about a Viking because the foot is slightly smaller than our westerly foot. Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that question. You can try it. And if it works for you, great. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Give it a shot. I know um, other folks, if they're using a non westerly foot and they find that the echo guides are a little bit too big and they slide off the foot, um, I have um, used a little bit of scotch tape or masking tape and just like kind of uh, lined the inner rim to make the opening just a fraction, you know, just enough to hug it. And it seems to do the trick. Or you can always go, you know, if it's like a Viking foot or a Bernina foot, ask Viking or Bernina if they have an equivalent product. That can be done, but these work with my Bernina machines. I've, nice. I've not tried it on the Janome, I don't think. No, I probably have. Yeah, they worked fine. Um, we got a question. It looks like someone's asking which template is used for the blast off block in the middle. Oh, good question. It is the uh, continuous heart border. Uh, this one right here, it comes in two sizes, and I use the smaller size on this one, I believe. Yeah, I think I did. And on the uh, another block and on the border, you're going to use both sizes. Oh, and let's tell them, too, you can go to the Sew so Steady Facebook page, 
go over to events and you can click on it and you can find this event and you can sign up for it. You can sign up for a particular store if you want to. You can also sign up for the whole series, which is six classes. And um, I'm working on all, some um, written instruction for you also. And uh, once it's all there, uh, once I'm through with it, you'll be able to get that too. Right now, you do have some written instruction, but it's really just letting you know. Uh, let me pull it up. All it is right now is like here's the picture of the front and what all the blocks look like. There it is without my writing all over it. And then the supplies that are needed for each block. The uh, names of the blocks in the order uh, of, of the columns. The borders. Uh, I made it originally. It was not going to be have borders. But so many people have asked. So I went ahead and told you how much fabric to get for the borders. Now, I don't care to piece my borders. I would rather they be long runs, you know, even if they're 50 inches long or whatever. So I told you to get two yards of the solid fabric and two yards of the reveal fabric. And that's the only reason I did that was so that you don't have to do any uh, piecing together on those long runs. If you don't mind piecing, if that's okay with you, uh, then go right ahead. But I've always found when I have excess fabric left over, I'm all, I can always find a use for it or it goes in my stash and, you know, part of it may get added to a bag or something like that later on. So I've never had a problem with too much fabric. Any more questions? Well, it looks like most of the questions have uh, tapered off. So um, I want to remind everyone, like Ann said, on the Facebook page, on So Steady's Facebook page for events, you can sign up. You'll see it on the April 2nd listing for uh, session three of this. I've also put it in the comments, uh, I think, more than once for both the session three, if you're buying them uh, class by class, or as if you want to get the full series that you can purchase it uh, complete. Yeah, awesome. Anything else today, Ann? Um, that's all I can think of. You that's guys good. go have fun and quilt. And I, a lot of people have told me, oh, I've got rulers, but I'm intimidated by them. I haven't even had them out of the package. Get them out and play with them. Watch the, the two previous classes and, and play with your rulers and have fun. You have got the neatest project or product I think I've seen in the quilting world. I get the perfection that I'd love to have on a quilt. And, uh, you know, I did it myself. I did it by hand. And when I was uh, first learning to quilt, my mom had asked me to make a quilt for her, and I did, and then I handed it off to a long armor, and I love long armors. I really do. They've got their place. They're wonderful, and we need them, and yeah, give them your king-size quilt, but any other quilts, quilt your own. You'll have so much satisfaction knowing that you did your quilt from start to finish all by yourself. My mom said my first sentence I strung together as a small child was, I do it myself. And I'm still that way today. You know, and like I said, I'm not knocking long armors. I think they're wonderful. And the lady that did my quilt for me did a fabulous job. Absolutely beautiful. But I love doing my own also. So there you go. Well, we look forward to seeing everyone on April 2nd for our Flower Power Series Part 3. And if you, we have lots of other classes also listed um, on our Facebook events page for a live event and tons on our So Steady University for more support if you're still hesitant and you need some ideas to get started. So thank you for joining us, everyone. And um, we look forward to seeing you soon on our next educational video. All right. Bye, everybody. Go have fun.